This part is about the array modifier and the array modifier basically takes your object and makes a lot of copies of. You can see this is one copy now so in total with the original object we come to two. If I raise this count you can see this bar is getting longer. Now there is three ways of offsetting the next copy. First is constant. If I type in one as a constant this is in blender units. So every object will be offset by 2.8 blender units. And you can see that the size of this cube when you first insert it is 2 by 2 by 2. And that means 2.8 blender units will space it 0.8 blender units apart. Same goes of course for the y and the z axis. Okay. The next thing is the relative offset. The relative offset will take a bounding box of your object and determine it as one. And of course, this would be one width of the object and 30% more. So you can see that if I change the bounding box width of my object, the objects will get spaced further apart. And this is what the relative offset does. Back to the original. Now the third version is an object offset. So I'll press Alt G to get this back into the center because the object offset will take into account the size of your mesh, the rotation and the position, all relative to the offset object. If I scale this down and use the empty I just inserted as an object to offset, you can see that this gets very, very large. The reason is this cube is now scaled to 308.1% while the empty still is at 100%. And the easiest way to resolve this issue is to press Ctrl A and say apply scale. And that will reset the cube scale to one, keeping its dimensions. And now if I move this offset object over here, you can see that the line is moving with it. I'm going to turn off the relative offset and you can see that now that I'm moving the empty this line is getting longer. Now as I said it also goes for scale and rotate. So if I rotate this you can see that my cubes are being rotated offset by the distance and rotation relative to the original object. Now if I scale this down and significantly increase the count you can see that I kind of get a spiral tentacle. Now you can of course combine array modifier, meaning that you can add a second array modifier and if I choose an offset in Y direction, let's make this just a little bit more, then you can see that I can get more of these spirals. But if I were to insert another empty and instead of relative choose the object offset again and choose this empty, I can rotate this by 90 degrees and if I now increase the count you can see that we now have four of these tentacles in a row or not in a row but well we got four of them and you can see this empty now controls this set and this empty is probably best to be left alone because it will offset your tentacles. So this is one of the most common features of the array modifier if you are using nothing else. So let's have a look at another thing and that is the the start and end cap. And for that I've inserted a cube and I've marked these two faces. And I'll press X and delete the faces now. And instead of using the X offset, I'm going to use the Y offset. And you can see now that these, um, this cube is actually forming a tube. And I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier and you can see that it's a perfect tube. Now if I wanted to continue this tube, it would be open at the sides, but if I chose the entire cube there would be faces all over here messing up my subsurf modifier. So what you can do is add a mesh cube and make sure it has the same dimensions, not scale, the same dimensions as this. Now if I call this one start, I can use it as a start at cap. Of course the name is not all that important. I'm going to delete this face and now I'm going to choose a start cap of start and I can move this now and you can see it's a perfect fit. The problem is if you have moved this somehow or scaled it 
in any way, no matter in edit mode or not, there will be no live update in order to check what this is doing. Let's say the scale is wrong and I want to see in real time what the difference is. It doesn't matter if I scale this in edit mode or in object mode. I will only see the difference once I go back into this here or go back out of edit mode. Meaning if I were to transform this, I'd have to go out of edit mode in order to check the transformation. And that is, of course, pretty annoying, but I don't know how to fix this. Okay, the same goes, of course, for the end cap, you'd have to create an object with the same dimensions, but it is closed in order to use it as an end cap. So let's have a look at the third or the last option I have not discussed yet, I'm going to insert a circle. And I'm going to press F6 and make that 36 because it's easier to calculate with 36 vertices if you're calculating with 360 degrees. I'm going to delete these two vertices and also these. I can now press period in order to make the center my uh, pivot point and scale these out. If I now add an array modifier and also another empty, I can disable the relative offset, enable the object offset and choose this empty. And if I now rotate this by 40 degrees, you can see that it will sort of, it will only offset this by the rotation because the origin and the position of the empty are the same thing. So I'm just going to rotate this 40 degrees, which makes it very accurate. And then I'm going to increase the count until we have a full cogwheel. And in the old blender, of course, there was a spin up option. But this is basically what you do if you still need that option, create an array and use the empty to offset it. And if I now go ahead and press E and S, I can scale these in. And now we have sort of a closed cogwheel. To see what the, the merge option does, we can add another modifier, the subdivision surface, and you can see that now all these single pieces here get influenced by the subsurf modifier because they're not connected. If I check the merge option, you can see that now the tiles are connected and that is being respected by the subsurf modifier. Oh, but there's still one gap over here and you just have to check first and last to close that gap. You can choose the merge distance, meaning if you have modeled by hand or if there was no way to be fully accurate, you can just increase the distance in which Blender scans what to merge, but be careful not to raise this too high because then it will overlap with the next one in the array. There's three more options with the array modifier, fixed count, fit curve and length. And let's go back to the second layer where I have created all that stuff. I'm just going to delete this and I'm going to insert a curve and rotate this and scale this down. And just so we have something to work with. And for example, if I use the array modifier and combine it with a curve modifier, you can see this works nicely. I can now of course, count how many counts I need in order to fit the curve length. But there's a better way to do that, I can say fit curve, Now I have to choose the curve. And you can see it's now trying to fill the entire curve. But as you can see, my origin of the object is over here. So I'll have to move this over there. And the issue you're seeing here is the same as before. The scale of the cube is 26%. And the scale of the curve is 300%. So if I apply this scale, and also apply this scale with control A, you can say you can see this is fitting neatly again. And the other option we have here is fit length. And that just means I can, instead of telling blender the count of the arrays, I can say, I want seven blender units to be filled by the array. And that's how blender will adjust the count. There's one last thing about the fit curve option, you can actually animate this. And actually, you do not need the curve to be a curve modifier, you can do the same thing without it having a curve modifier and just increase the length of the curve. And you can see the count of the array will go up while you're fitting the curve. So this is mainly for animation purposes. In the new blender, of course, you can also just animate 
the count by pressing I with the mouse over this. I guess that's it for arrays. Thank you for watching.